Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to review the Celestron 9.25 inch Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. I've owned this telescope for about six months or so, and I've had a chance to use it extensively, so I feel I have enough experience with this telescope to give it a thorough review. This telescope has an unusual aperture of 9.25 inches or 235 millimeters, and it has a 2,350 millimeter focal length, giving it a focal ratio of 10. It's a Schmidt Cassegrain design, which means it has a spherical primary mirror at the back of the telescope and a smaller secondary mirror at the front of the telescope on the inside of a corrector plate that sits out at the very end of the telescope. The light enters the telescope through that corrector plate, which is there to correct for spherical aberrations caused by the spherical mirror, primary mirror. And then the light bounces off of the primary mirror and is sent to the secondary mirror, which then sends the light back to a hole in the middle of the primary mirror where the diagonal and eyepiece are attached to the telescope. In this way, this telescope is much more compact than a reflector telescope of comparable aperture. The optical tube is black aluminum and it's only 22 inches long and it weighs 20 pounds, but more like 22 pounds when you add a diagonal and an eyepiece. This is with nothing on it but the dovetail bar, 21.5 pounds. With the six by 30 finder scope, a one and a quarter diagonal and a 25 millimeter eyepiece, it weighs 22.3 pounds. The telescope arrived very well collimated and the views through this telescope have been very impressive. Wow! The optics have Celestron's Starbright XLT coatings on them, which have allowed me to see much detail on the moon and on the planets. I've split some difficult double stars, and it's allowed me to see subtle details on faint galaxies and nebulae. For example, I was able to make out the dust lane in the Little Sombrero Galaxy, a galaxy found in Pegasus in GC 7814. And I even saw the difficult cone nebula with this telescope from here, a Bortle 3 site. The Celestron C9.25 can be mounted on a variety of telescope mounts that will accept the big CGEM dovetail bar that it comes with. The CGEM dovetail is the same as the Lasmandi dovetail. I have my C9.25 telescope mounted on my Lasmandi GM8 telescope mount and it's currently in my observatory where I am now, but I can also put the C9.25 on my iOptron HAZ46 mount when needed since my Laz Mandy mount is the only one that can hold my six inch refractor, so they have to share. I haven't tried the C9.25 on my Sirius EQG mount, which can hold 30 pounds, but I think it could handle this for visual use anyway. I have taken some video with the C9.25 telescope of planets and the moon, but I haven't tried it for deep sky astrophotography. But according to Celestron, the XLT coatings on this telescope will increase contrast in light transmission, providing brighter deep sky images and allowing shorter exposure times. I can't confirm that with any personal experience, but I can confirm that this is a great telescope for lunar or planetary imaging or viewing. This telescope comes equipped with FASTAR, and that's a technology that Celestron developed to put on some of their schmidt cassegrain telescopes that allows the user to remove the secondary mirror and replace it with a field flattening lens assembly that's sold separately by third party manufacturers. And the FASTAR allows the user to put an astronomy camera on the front of the telescope, making the telescope F2 instead of F10. With FASTAR, this allows exposures 25 times shorter than if you place the camera at the back of the telescope where it traditionally is placed using the telescope's native F10 focal ratio. 
According to Celestron, this will allow you to image galaxies and nebulae with exposures of just 30 seconds. The Starbright XLT optical coating system has enhanced multi-layer mirror coatings made from precise layers of aluminum, quartz, titanium dioxide, and silicon dioxide. Reflectivity is fairly flat across the spectrum, optimizing it for both imaging and visual observing. Celestron also uses high transmission water white glass that transmits about 90.5% of light without the anti-reflective coatings and when used in conjunction with the anti-reflective coatings gives the telescope an average light transmission of 97.4%. The optics on this telescope are very impressive and I'm very happy with the telescope and with the views I've had so far of faint deep sky objects, the moon, and the planets. It's a great all-around telescope. It comes with the CGE dovetail, a one and a quarter inch diagonal, and a 25 millimeter eyepiece, and this six by 30 finder scope. So everything you need to get started except for a mount. As of the date I'm filming this, spring 2025, the telescope cost about 1,800 US dollars for the optical tube assembly only. That's not bad for such a fine telescope. If you don't want to invest in the field flattening assembly to make the telescope F2 for using it with the astronomy camera, you can still upgrade the telescope with Celestron's F6.3 focal reducer. This one's not made by Celestron, but it works on here for visual use and for reducing the focal length for astrophotography to 6.3. I would also strongly recommend that you replace the included 6x30 finder scope with the Telrad, or at least an 8x50 finder scope because 6x30 is too small to be useful. It's also essential that you purchase a dew shield to keep the dew off the corrector plate and also protect it from dust. And of course, you'll need to get a telescope mount that can handle at least 22 pounds of payload. I don't have any complaints about the optics on this telescope. I thought they were great, and I'm glad I didn't pay the additional $1,000 for the Edge HD version of this telescope because I really don't think it's necessary. For another $1,000 for the HD, you get a 9x50 finder scope, a 2-inch diagonal, and a 23mm luminose 2-inch eyepiece, and you get the aplanatic field. In my opinion, those things are not worth $1,000. The luminose eyepiece is nice, as are the nicer diagonal and the finder scope, but I don't think you'll even notice the aplanatic field and the other items don't add up to $1,000. So if you're thinking about getting a Celestron 9.25 inch telescope, I would strongly recommend that you save your extra $1,000 and just get the C9.25 instead of the Edge now, I do have one complaint about this telescope. Since I'm a visual observer, I would be much more interested in a lighter telescope than having the Fast Star or the HD version. I would never use the Fast Star, and I don't think the HD would improve my views of the universe. And worse, the HD weighs an additional five pounds or so. So the addition of this very heavy CG M dovetail on the C9.25 is completely superfluous for my purposes anyway. But when I bought a much lighter Vixen style dovetail bar from Farpoint Astro and from Celestron, I wasn't able to install either of those Vixen dovetails that weigh a lot less on this telescope because the screw holes don't allow it. The Vixen dovetail is only intended to be placed on top of the telescope as a secondary dovetail the opposite of what my intended result was, which was to make the telescope lighter. I really wish that this C9.25 telescope had come standard with a Vixen dovetail. It would make the telescope weigh, I think, around 19 pounds, which may not sound like much, but as you age, every saved pound takes on enormous importance, believe me. <laughs> However, 
I can handle the 22 pounds that my C9.25 weighs as long as I keep the mount low so I can easily get it into the saddle. So in conclusion, this is an excellent telescope and I highly recommend it. I have thoroughly enjoyed mine so far. I had a Mead 10 inch Schmidt Cassegrain that I took camp in last year, but at 30 pounds, it was just too heavy for me. I nearly dropped it twice and it scared me to death, so I sold it. I'm hoping that this C9.25 will be my new camp and telescope. I give this telescope five stars. That's it for now. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.